The Plastic Soldier Company heads up this month's rumours and lies with their announcement of a Leopard 1 in 15mm scale. The company announced via their website and Facebook pages that design work has started on this project, although no firm release date is set. Piers Brand from the Plastic Soldier Company said the design brief for the Leopard kit included a lot of variants. It's planned for the kit to build the Leopard 1, A1, A3 and 4 and A5 versions, as well as the Canadian C1 and even the Flak Panzer Gepard. Initially this will be released in 15mm, but if there's sufficient interest a 20mm version might follow. The Cold War releases from the Plastic Soldier Company are designed to work with another product announced this month, Battlegroup Northag from Iron Fist Publishing. This planned hardcover rulebook will extend the Battlegroup rule set from World War II into the Cold War. Again, there are no firm release dates for this product. Since they've decided to cover the Cold War, I've put in my request for a Plastic Centurion for future kit releases. We'll just have to wait and see. The Plastic Soldier Company announced that they'll be releasing a 20mm version of their new T-55 kit, so sales of the 15mm version must have been good. The box will contain three vehicles and cover the same variants as the 15mm kit. I will review the 15mm T-55 kit when my pre-order arrives. Until then, Lee from Breakthrough Assault has done a review, so you can peek inside the box. The URL is on screen and in the description. Battlefront released their command cards last month, just in time to miss out on rumours and lies. In case you're not familiar with command cards, these are add-on cards for the Africa Corps and Desert Rats books, as well as the Fog of War objective cards used to add variety to missions. The Fog of War card pack has 30 cards, but there are two of each card, so only actually 15 unique cards here. These cards can be used for the free-for-all and dust-up missions to add a variety of different objectives to earn players' victory points. Fog of War objectives are held the same way regular mission objectives are secured, with the victory points specified on the cards. The book-specific command card packs work with the Forces books to add new formations, list-building upgrades and warriors. I can see what Battlefront are trying to do here, have simple books and allow players to add complexity through the add-on cards if they want more detail. This is consistent with their 4th edition goals of making the basic game system simpler and more accessible to new players, but I have to say that it makes the new Forces book seem incomplete and looks like a way to make players pay more to add things like Warriors, Transport or Specialist Forces, things that were traditionally covered in the books. The Fog of War objective cards are a more innovative move to add variety to the basic missions in the game, but there are only 15 unique cards here. Production and quality control issues continued to plague Battlefront's double-sided gaming mat. After switching suppliers and re-releasing the mats in May, there have been some issues. The new mats were supplied folded, not rolled, and some customers have complained about creasing in the neoprene material. The mats are also smaller than the specified dimensions, which Battlefront have blamed on the mats being cut while stretched and shrinking back when no longer under tension. The company has acknowledged the sizing is a quality control issue, and they've offered a refund if customers return their mats to the place of purchase before June 30. Unfortunately, that means if you're watching this, you've probably missed your chance. This product has been a troubled one for Battlefront, and they'll have to work hard to avoid issues like this if they want to market this type of product in the future. Highlights for June releases include the plastic universal carriers and six-pounder anti-tank guns for the British, and the 5cm tank hunter platoon for the Germans. British also get the MMG platoon and mortar section heavy weapons for infantry in the new ABS plastic. Resin releases include scout cars and armoured cars, AA guns and the Panzer II light tank, as well as air support. British get the Hurricane II tank busters and the Germans get Stuka dive bombers. Last month we looked at the upcoming releases for Team Yankee with Red Thunder due out in July. The first releases will be the Red Thunder 60-page hardcover rulebook and the Pateknov's Bears and Yuri's Wolves box sets. These are due out in early July. This will be followed with a second wave later in the month featuring the Plastic BTR-60 Company, BRDM-2 Recon Platoon, Spandrel AT Platoon and SA-9 Gaskin Sam Platoon. The actual T-64 Company box set is not due for release until August. We'll have a look at the August releases in more detail next month. Tanks players have finally seen the release of the Desert Plastics. These were delayed several times and have been much anticipated, although I'm not sure how the mid-war tanks will mix in games with later war tanks already released. 
These would also be a way for Flames players to pick up an extra vehicle if you need it for your forces. Tanks also has some new gaming mats with three new 36 by 36 inch mats. These are vinyl mats and can be used separately or fitted together to create a larger space for bigger battles. Svezda's mouse has finally been released. Here's the box art for the kit and some product shots. I've ordered mine from Latvia and will do a review when it gets here. I posted some of these shots on my Facebook page and opinion was strongly divided between people who couldn't wait to build one of these unique vehicles and others who couldn't see the point. They noted the mouse is not well represented in the rules and would have been a lumbering, unreliable beast in combat. I'm in the unique camp myself, but the opponents have a strong point. I can't wait to build it, but I wouldn't want to field it for anything other than novelty value. So this month, the last of the initial 4th edition launch waves arrived from Battlefront. Battlefront's release focus in July seems to be shifting to Team Yankee with Red Thunder, but I'm sure there'll be some more 4th edition releases announced soon. I'm looking to see how the command cards are received, and if people find them a useful addition to the game. But I'm really excited about seeing a Leopard 1 in plastic from the Plastic Soldier Company, and another rule set for Cold War and Modern is welcome. I can see me having to get my pre-orders in when they become available. I've suggested Centurion. Maybe if you have something you want to see in plastic, you should drop the Plastic Soldier Company a line.